Tonight I'm speaking on what I've titled Plantings of the Law. Plantings of the Law. Hallelujah. Amen. When you look at Matthew chapter 13. I think Jesus shared about six parables in that passage. The first of the parables is the parable of the sower. In that parable, we are told that a sower went out to sow seeds. And the method of sowing that was adopted was the sowing by dispersion. He takes the seed and spreads it across the land. The sower, we are told, is God Himself. In the goodness and in the kindness of God, when He's spreading His seed, He spreads it everywhere. And the seed that is sown, we are told, is the word of God. We are told that the seeds fell on four different grounds. Three of these grounds, we are told, were not good. Because these grounds did not allow the seed to release its full potential. But there was one ground that allowed the seed to yield its potential. And depending on the response that ground gave, there was 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100-fold. These grounds, we are told, represent the heart of men. And depending on the response that we give to the word of God, we are able to see the results of the word come in certain measures or we do not see it at all. And so we are admonished to have the right kind of heart. Hearts that are able to receive the word of God. That the word will be grafted into our hearts. And it is the engrafted word that is able to save our souls. Apostle Paul admonishes that we should allow the word of God to dwell in us richly. And so as Christians, we have a responsibility to live a word-filled life. And a heart that is full of the word helps us to respond to the word so that we can live the quality of life God expects us to live. Now after that parable Jesus talked about another parable which we want to look at. Matthew chapter 13 verse 24. Matthew 13 verse 24. Kindly give it to me in the NIV. 
Hear the word of the Lord. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. This is giving us a picture of some dynamics that take place in the kingdom of God. And again, God as a sower sows good seeds now, in his vineyard. So a man goes out and sows good seeds in his field. Verse 25. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. Even though he sowed good seeds all right, somebody came to sow bad seeds among them. And this happened only because men had gone to sleep. When as Christians we go to sleep, the enemy is able to sow negative seeds around the good seeds that God sows in our lives. Sleeping refers to a life of lukewarmness. Sleeping talks about a life of carnality. Sleeping talks about prayerlessness. Sleeping talks about having a very negative attitude towards the word of God. God's intentions for our life is to do us good. And he sows good seeds because he wants good results. But tonight I need you to understand that there is an enemy within the terrain we are operating who also sows bad seeds. And these bad seeds, they come to corrupt what the good seed must yield. They come to compete with the good seeds. While men slept, at our blind side, when as watchmen, we are failed to be watchmen. And when I talk about watchmen, I'm not talking about prayer warriors only. As far as your life is concerned, you are a watchman. And you must be very alert on your life. You must be very alert on your life. Not allowing just anything to gain entrance into your life. Because when you select spiritually, you may be in church all right. But seats are soon. The interesting thing about this is that at the time seeds are sown, you won't see it. It is only when there is growth. And so there are people walking around who have been poisoned early in their lives, but it is only a matter of time. Then they begin to see the things, begin to pop up. Hallelujah. And everybody wonders, ah, when did this person change? The seed was sown long ago. Seeds are sown, but it takes time for them to grow. All of us have the responsibility of guarding against the environment we expose ourselves to. Nuti, you better hear on we say, and you better be a dear Jumano, you better be a whole bang. 
Open up yourself for environment where good seeds are prevailing. And be very wary of areas where negative seeds can be sown into your life. And it was the man's enemy who came in to sow the the seeds. Never lie to yourself. Never lie to yourself. There are enemy spirits lurking around you. And some of them are in the form of human beings around you. I'm not asking you to hurt anybody. But be wary of the people who come into your immediate circles. And he went away. At the time the sowing is going on, no man sees it because he wants to hide. Are there young people in the house? Be very, be very careful about your friends. 26. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. All this one, the bad seed, nobody knew that something had been sown. Nobody has seen it. But they were there. At the time you were about to bud and show forth for the glory of God, then they also pop up. They are, they are there to discredit you. And unfortunately, somehow in the bid to do good, they also show up. And so don't sleep. To allow the enemy to sow the seed. Are you understanding me? It is a common feature in the kingdom of God. The good seed appeared. The wheat also appeared. Verse 27. The owner servant came to him and said, said didn't you sow good seed in your field now people who are close to you begin to wonder when did he change was not that child brought to Sunday school didn't we train this person in the house of God where we not constantly giving the person the word of God what change what change what happened and we are seeing some strange manifestations this is not what we planted in you why are we seeing this and there are no parents in the house you know what I'm talking about because sometimes certain threats show up and you wonder where this thing came from didn't you sow good seed if you sow good seed our expectation is that we are seeing good trees coming up where then did the weeds come from where did it come from and sometimes you look at certain lives and you wonder the investment of God in that life and you begin to ask where are these threats coming from? Where are these manifestations coming from? How did we learn God? When did the enemy manage to sow these seeds around you? Because you are seeing a change. If you say, Yo, who else is, can I be and something else is happening. You see the love of God there. You see the love of God there. You see the love of God there. At the same time, the love of the world. And you see what we call duality. 
two persons manifesting in one personality. Hallelujah. Amen. No sleeping in the house. Oh, are you with me? Amen. This is why spiritually we must not sleep. It is about trading away your future if you sleep spiritually. Verse 28. The father always has answers. And enemy did this. Beloved, don't fear the devil, but don't discount him. <laughs> He's potent and he works. And the moment, the moment you go to sleep, he will quickly drop his seat and run away. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them out? So, you are not looking for solution. Why? This one is simple. Let us go and root them out. Not knowing that the weeds come with a strategic operation. They come with a strategic operation. Verse 29. <laughs> it says that no, he answered. I thought the answer should be yes. Because, I mean, why should we waste time? And he gives the reason. Because while you are pulling the wheat, you may root out the wheat with them. There are enemies of oppression is such that he entangles itself with our roots. It attacked the root of goodness. And so in the bit to dislodge it, if you are not careful, you dislodge both the good and the evil. So your surest bet your surest bet. Don't sleep. Can we say together, don't sleep spiritually? Oh, let me feel it. Don't sleep spiritually. That is the sure solution. But before we end, before we end, we will know how to dominate in this situation. You may root out the wheat with them. Verse 30. This is God's plan. Let's both grow together. Allow them to grow together. Until the harvest. The God who is able to distinct. He said that at that time, I will tell the harvest. First, collect the weeds and, and tie them in bundles and, and to be burned. Then gather the wheat and bring it into my bag. When it comes to the separation of these things, it goes by the tag, except the Lord. I want you to note it. The men themselves did not have the solution. And when men wanted to solve the problem, God says that don't try it. This one is not human. He says that reserve that one for me. I am God. What is impossible with man is possible with me. And so when you find yourself in duality, go before the most high God who has the power to cut off 
and separate such that we will not harm the good. And I believe it is time for some people to go and lie before God. Paul says that the good that I want to do, I am unable to do it. But the bad things that I don't want, they easily flow out of my life. It says the war is me. All righteous sinner. That was in Romans chapter 7. Roman in chapter 8. Oh, hallelujah. He begins to pronounce his liberty. Within the transition from chapter 7 to chapter 8. I personally believe that the man went before God. He said that this problem goes by the tag except the Lord. And so, Lord, I come before you. <laughs> Lord, may this one be dealt with. And I picture Jacob. He goes before the Lord. He travels. And something is removed. So that he goes out clean. It is time for people to go before the Lord. Verse number 36. Hear the word of the Lord. He told 36, please. 36. It says that then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, Explain, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. Is he answered? The one who sowed the good seed is the son of man, Jesus Christ. As the firstborn son, he continues to sow seeds. Now listen, go on. The field is the world. And the good seed stands for the sons of the kingdom. So this time, the seed is not the word of God. When a child consistently receives the word of God, and the word of God dwells in him richly, and the word of God is grafted into his life, that child of God, who is loaded with the word of God now becomes a seed for Jesus to sow. If, if you have not gotten to the level of seed, then you have not started your operation. Because it is God's desire that each and every one of us will become a planting of the Lord. Hallelujah. And a seeds are what we plant. You become the seed, a human seed, when the seed of God is permitted to reign in your life. And so God begins to plant us in various situations in this life. In the program of becoming a penetrating power, God will make us all seeds. He will sow some in the legal field. He will sow some in the medical field. And every sector of society, God will sow people there. Ministry is not just about what we do in the church room. According to the divine timetable, God is moving out. 
and taking control of every facet of human society. And so each and every one of us must be good recipients of the word of God. Good recipients of the seed of the word of God. So that we become seeds in the hands of Jesus Christ to be sown in the world. Are you with me? Look at me. Everybody looking at me today, your life is very important to God. Hallelujah. And God has a plan to plant you somewhere. He says the weeds are the sons of the evil one. And wherever God so sits. The devil will sow seeds. They will come in the form of the occult. They will come in fetish power. They will come in all manner of strange spirits. Trying to stop you from manifesting that which God has put in you. Plantings of the Lord. Let's get ready for the contention from the devil because he will sow negative seeds around us. The next verse, he says that the enemy who sows the seed is the devil. While God is sowing. The devil is sowing. The harvest time is the end of the age. And the harvesters are the angels. When you go, you can continue. But I need you to understand that you need to allow the word of God to fill you, seed of the word of God to fill you, so that you become a seed in the hands of God. So as seeds in the hands of God, there are certain dynamics that we have to go through in our planting process. And I pray that tonight you will understand these things. John chapter 24, John chapter 12 verse 24. I tell you the truth. And listen, this is truth. And when you see truth, buy it and sell it not. So this is the truth. You can do nothing about it. Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies. It remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Every seed will have to be planted. And in the planting process, we go through certain things. In the in when God plants you, the first thing that must happen to you is that you must die. Pastor Ken has told us severally about seeds that he planted, and sometimes he goes to watch how they grow and how they smell. So for can actually and pen be pray a diaba or dia na to be or coco send ya F na any effa. Every seed that is planted must die. And para Without resurrection, there is no newness of life. Every one of us, till we come to the place of death, burial, and resurrection, the results of our lives will not come out. The Christian life is a resurrected life. A resurrected life is life that emanates from death. Without death, no life. 
And so God's intention is that in planting us, we will go through the death process. And sometimes when they are planting us, it is as if God is hiding us. It is as if so things that we have been put in a hard terrain. It is as if uh, difficulties have surrounded us all over. And in the process, the flesh will be dying. The appetite for the world, they will be dying. The negative things in our lives, they will be dying. The lying spirit will be killed. The pride will be killed. Very difficult situations. But as we go through the process, the dying process enables us to come out. And it gives us foundation or a root in the ground. Beloved, sometimes there are believers who do not have roots. Because they don't allow God to plant them. If you say, the, the discomfort of planting, they don't like. Where must I not see the light of day? It's good to be in the light. Where must I be in the dark regions of the ground? Where must I be in the realm where I am covered? Why don't I come out? Every one of us in our planting process God will put us in a difficult place. Jesus, the Bible says, he emerged as a tender shoot out of a dry ground. Allow God to plant you. Without planting, you remain single. <laughs> Hallelujah. But potentially, you have many more seeds to come out of your life. So planting according to God's agenda is to help you unleash your potential in the world. So if I were you, I will say, yes, Lord. Whatever you take me through, yes, Lord. Because I don't have to live a single life. When you are planted, the prophecy of Isaiah, one will become a thousand. And the least a nation. That is how that scripture is fulfilled. Oh, when, you, when you hear one will become a thousand hallelujah I receive it it's not about receiving if you want to receive it then be planted hallelujah let the Lord plant you let the Lord plant you so when you die as a planting of the Lord you produce many seeds. I see men and women who are full of many seeds because they sat in the house of God and various seeds of God's word were planted in their lives. Now, they, now that they have become human seeds, there must be diversity of manifestations so that the Lord will be glorified. Turn with me to Mark chapter 4. The plantings of the Lord. Verse 26. Mark chapter 4, verse 26. Mark Oguma 89, Chichem Edu 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 Edu
Saying that was true, and he might know a tear. A man's cutest seed. Or better, maybe a pity. So in this scattering, we can liken it to the word as a seed, but now we are talking about sons of the kingdom as seeds. Now, you bet me out, you to say, a year, you know, as summer, yeah, two appetite, no more, I hate you. Essence, yeah, kafa, a year, a nipper ma, or we a diaba. A man scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, whether he sleeps or he gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. Now, if we are any Jew, say or thou, so or sorry, or two of you have your body a fifty. Now, quite a fast way fifty nine, you know, with him. This is the work of grace. Way I am doom. It is not anything about man. Wait, yeah, and you nipa ne yebi. God plants you. Radiant kasa ana. Whether you sleep or you get up, the seed sprouts. It grows, though he does not know how. Nah, there is a God who, when we settle for His planting, He becomes the God of increase in our lives. Hallelujah. Ampara weidiye. The grace of God is able to sustain the seeds that God plants. Ampara, when you come on that domino, it will make a year a dia balu on one casa a dia. So that you will sprout. So the baya will be fifty. Sprouting is about breaking through the soil. Now, sir, sir, yeka, yeka, sir, a fifty. I let you say, I did be a chef for my FPA, and you are able to grow. Now, I feel you need. When you are the planting of the Lord, and you remain the planting of the Lord that God has made, you will be able to break all the restrictions that are around you by the grace of God. And tonight I want to tell somebody the grace of God is fastening you Stay put wherever God has put you no matter the hard ground that you find yourself grace is working on your life grace is building you up grace is releasing you you are going through some hard things that you don't understand it's all about your planting. <laughs> In the name of Jesus, I declare that you will sprout. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you will grow. You wouldn't know how. But the hand of God will bring it to pass. Oh, glory to God. 28. It says that all by itself, the soil produces grain. In the name of Jesus, I said you will produce grain because you have decided to remain planted. First of all, you, you will manifest the stalk. Then you will manifest the head. And the kennel in the head. Lift up your hand and say, Step by step, I am coming. Because I am the planting of the Lord. If we say, Step by step, somebody is coming. Men may have discounted you. But because you have yielded to the plantings of the Lord, the Lord is lifting you up. The Lord is causing you to emerge by the power. Of grace in a manner no man can resist because it is the doing of the Lord. Are you understanding? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen. Those of you who are privileged to sit in the house of God in the house of the word, you are blessed. 
because something great is going to happen in your life verse 29 it says as soon as the grain is ripe oh may you come to your stage of ripening he puts the sickle out he puts the sickle out because the harvest has come if you go through the process of planting, your harvest will come. And you see, when you look into the Bible, there are so many plantings of the Lord. And as God planted, the enemy planted around them. But let's see how we will prevail in that situation. Turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4. The word of the Lord came to me saying, and tonight the word of the Lord is coming to you. He who has an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. God tells you tonight that before I formed you, in the womb I knew you. God had you in his mind. Even before your existence, God had determined that a day will come when you will manifest you are not here by chance you are here according to divine ordination and according to divine timetable the God of all creation chose the season in which you are supposed to live and the bounds of your habitation before you were born, I will, I set you apart. I set you apart because I ordained that I will plant you in a certain situation. Each and every one of us has been set apart by God for a unique assignment. Before you were born, can you just imagine I set you apart and God is saying I appointed you as a prophet to the nations these are specific declarations concerning Jeremiah but you need to understand that you were also called in the same manner you may not have been called to be a prophet you, you may not have been called to be a prophet but there is a specific calling of God on your life and you are meant for certain nations you have been born for a certain domain and God will prepare you and plant you in that domain now let's carry on Verse 6. Ah, sovereign Lord. I, said, I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. Oh, like all of us. The man was seeing his human frailty. Tonight, we lift up our eyes above the troubles. In our lives, <laughs> we lift up our eyes above them. And we declare you as king. We declare you that your word is final. We declare that your word is authoritative. We declare that your word cannot be challenged. We declare that you are the irresistible one. I do not know how to speak. Hey, how can a prophet speak this way? 
A prophet is a speaker. But when he looked at himself humanly, I cannot speak. Tonight, what I tell you is that let God be true. Hallelujah. Are you understanding me? Let God be true. I am a child. I said in these seasons, God is anointing children. Hallelujah. <laughs> God is anointing children. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 7. It says, But the Lord said to me, and I radically said, Do not say. Tell somebody, do not see. There are certain things that we must not see. Where we have gotten to in our work with God, there's a certain kind of language that we must cease from. We must stop talking as though God is not real. And say, if God says yes, who can say no? When he opens, who can shut? And when he shuts, who can open? He is the sovereign Lord, the God of the nations. Say not, do not say, I am a child. God forbid that, the, uh, that we will speak a language that counters what God is saying. It says, as my planting, you must go, uh, you must go to everyone I send you to. And say whatever I command you. Your life is determined by where God sent you. Your utterances is determined by what God says you should say. Can we partner God in this way? We cannot talk anyhow. We cannot just go anywhere. The kind of life that you have, where you go, must be determined by God. What you say must be words that God has spoken. May the Lord grant us understanding. Verse 8. Do not be afraid of them. Yes. Wajebo, that word is powerful. Ma wajebo, ni ma ye ma buabo. Oh, shimi ni ne wulu ke buyo. Oh, shimi ni ne wulu ke buyo. I don't know the English word to use for ma wajebo. It's like divine fortification. <laughs> Do not be afraid of them. In the domain where God is planting you, fear not the enemy's agents. Let not the spirit of intimidation take over your life. It says that for I am with you. <laughs> it says that wherever you are, I, who has planted you, I am with you. And he says that when the worst happens, I will rescue you. Declares the Lord. And the Lord who is speaking is capital L, 
capital O, capital R, capital D, we are talking about the Almighty God. The one who has the final say. Your life will never be a waste. Your life is precious to God. Verse 9. It says that then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, now I have put my words in your mouth. This is divine equipment. Anybody who allows God to plant him that person becomes divinely equipped. Come floods, come high waters, come fire, you'll still be standing. Because you are the planting of the Lord. Verse 10. Now I have planted and the Lord has watered. Today. Say today. 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 It's not any other day. We are talking about today. As a planting of the Lord, hear ye the declaration of God. Today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms. Everybody who has been planted by God is on divine assignment within the domain that God plants you. And so he says that begin to see the appointment that God has with you. How he has set you over a certain domain. Over nations and kingdoms, kingdoms of men and kingdoms of demons, within the domain where God has planted you. If you partner with God, you will begin to root out. Say, root out. I don't like a fruit. That is why I'm saying, root out. You know what that means. When you begin to deal, operate as the planting of the Lord, you demolish roots. Listen, let's develop spiritual strength. Some of us, we come and go, and it's like one shek. Your life is far more than ordinariness. Say tear down. Tear down. Titimu. Titimu. Some of us, you are carrying the capacity to tear down things. If you come to the fullness of your strength, as you allow the word to reign in you, you begin to tear down. Say with me, destroy. There are certain things that ought to be destroyed because you are the planting of the Lord in that area. Are you understanding me? Say with me, throw down. Hallelujah. We overthrow things. That is the capacity you have as a planting of the Lord. And, a, and as a planting of the Lord, you have the capacity also to build and to plant. I'm talking to some people who are the plantings of the Lord in their families. No, I'm saying you are the planting of the Lord in your family. You are the planting of the Lord in your community. In your workplace, you are the planting of the Lord. It is time for us to arise. 
dismantle disorganize frustrate the agenda and the schemes of the enemy because we know that we are operating in enemy terrain and you also want to plant around you but wherever you are the plantings of the enemy must confess it was said that you are the planting of the Lord. And you make a difference in that area. Shall we rise on our feet? Lift up yourself before the Lord. The plantings of the Lord. Oh, that the word of God will do a perfect work in us. You want to tell God that God, I want to be a seed in your hand. So that you will plant me. So that your purpose will be done in my life. Lift up your voice and talk to the Lord. Lift up your voice and talk to the Lord. Tonight, somebody is saying that God, I, I want to come out of the realm of sleeping. God, I've been joking with my Christian life. But never again. NCBM. I wake up to the call. Me sorry. I wake up to prayer. Me sorry, Abam Paye. I wake up unto the study of the word. Me sorry, seme shen ami asemu. I come out of every form of carnality. Na aye ho namu ju ma die biara mi free mu. And I say, Lord, have your own way. Na me kasa radi wan kasa. In the name of Jesus. Amandi katondi ribi satapaya. Ivani kasu bayande katondi.